stuck into a sweat with even the thought of having company? I'm here to help. After trying just a few of my hosting tips, you'll be more than ready to say, come on over. All right, friends, we are here planting these shrubs we ordered from fastgrowingtrees.com, one of our affiliates, and we went through how it arrived. We unboxed it, they were in great shape. And now we're gonna talk about how you plant them or how I'm planting them in my landscape. And we're gonna start with my friend, my dear beloved friend, Fran, who knows more about Southern gardening than anyone I know. Green acres, we are there. And she has pretty much taught me. That's very kind of you to say. <laughs> it's true. <laughs> and if you think you're kind of on the fence about those master gardener classes and you're like, is it worth it? Yes, totally totally worth it. They so are. I have they learned are. so much from Fran. And so we are together going to talk about our zone, which is zone 7A slash B, and why we chose these particular shrubs for this zone. So the first one is a hybrid, and it's actually got this tag on it, and it's called Azalea Hybrid Conversation Piece. Let's talk about being a hybrid, because this has to do with the blooms, right? Yes. Tell them why. I don't know why. <laughs> He's just saying that. It's because the blooms are in three different colors, actually, or it can be up to three different colors, ranging from like a light pink to a bright pink. Now, Fran's not a pink person. She doesn't do pink. I'm the pink person. So I loved this shrub because it had all of these colors and it is a part shade. And you might notice that we're kind of in the woods here. And so we are always looking for woodsy, part shade, part sun things. The sun. It's magnificent. Now there are varieties of azaleas that bloom more than once a year, but this particular one is a spring bloomer. So it won't bloom probably this spring because it's getting established, right? That is correct. But it's okay because it has these gorgeous little leaves. So you might notice that it came in this quart size pot, right? And it comes in a really nice soil. But we're not going to just use that soil, are we? We're gonna use native soil, which being soil that came out of Chris's yard. Because you wanna mix that in. Also, main reason for it to work itself in and not just be sitting, the roots just be sitting in the good soil. It's got to push through the clay. The other reason would be armadillos. And in Texas, they are sometimes referred to as an opossum on the half shell. We have armadillos. We don't like the armadillos, they don't like us, and they like to dig up anything that we plant in really good soil. They're after the good stuff in the soil. So if you mix in this packy clay soil with it, it helps them not be able to dig it up, right? Well, that's what I hear. I don't have clay soil. Yeah, she so. has better soil. <laughs> not everyone has clay soil, but it's good to know yes. if you do. Okay. so. When you're going to plant something like this, the easiest way to see if it's going to fit is just to leave it in this nursery can and sit it down in. The other thing to know is that you want to plant it slightly higher than the soil level because you don't want the water to pool down in there and kind of sit, right? Now we are on a slope here. I don't know if you can tell, we are barely hanging on here on this slope. <laughs> and so I want the front of the azalea to be a little higher than the lip of the clay. And so Jimmy, wonderful Jimmy, already dug this hole for me, for us. And so we don't have to dig. But one thing that we like to do when we plant is add a little bit of a kick of a fertilizer. And this is called a biotone starter. Let's it will work for anything. Even show the front of the bag. Oh yeah, here's the bag. It's organic, biotone starter. Every gardener needs this. Every gardener. And this yeah. bag will last you a long time. And you just reach in, get a handful. I mean, there are instructions on the bag. We don't really read those. No, no we don't. We don't. Just kind of sprinkle a little around. Yes. And this is a fairly small hole, so it doesn't need a whole lot. Now you see it's gonna come out. It's gonna have all this excellent soil, which we love, but we're going to work in some of the clay to keep it. Now, Fran's really particular about turning, and so I always rely on her. Would you put this at the back? 
those spread at the back. I'm going to get that one little piece out that's broken. Okay, always and, good to groom. Yes, yeah, I would definitely have this at the back and this at the front. Okay, so now we're going to put in some of the soil that I dug up around it. You can see there's mulch around here too. And something that Fran has really taught me is you've got to get down in there and really make sure that you have the soil around it because when you water it down into the ground, it will break up the soil. I, I sometimes leave the tag on just to remind myself. Do you always take it off? I always take them off. She's, she's good about that. Sometimes I like to, if I lose the tag, I like to remember later. So I think what's important is not to really shove the soil, right? Like you want to kind of tamp well, it. Yeah, well, tamping is good, but pushing down easily. Yes. I guess is, is the best way to put it. And that gets the air pockets out of the soil, which is good. It doesn't have to be hard. No. Just enough to... Some people step on it. Would you recommend that? Uh, it depends on the plant. Okay. And so, if, you, if, you, if there's room for your feet. <laughs> yeah. You have tiny feet, you're all you're, you're ready to go. <laughs> I would just like to hear the pitter-patter of tiny feet before I die. I'll get you a mouse and a piece of sheet metal. So I'm just putting in, sprinkling in, and kind of patting down some of our native soil. And then what you want to do after you plant these is you don't want to, quote, wait for it to rain. You want mm -hmm. to soak it, right? Get it really down in there. Yeah, it's important to water well when you plant. And water regularly if you're kind of in a, even though this is drought tolerant, which is awesome, it's a woody <clears throat> shrub, you still want to give it a really good chance at the start and keep it moist, evenly, evenly moist. moist. Yes. And it will certainly no. drain down this hill. Yeah, if, if you're in an area where it's there's you don't have this drainage, then I don't think once it's in the ground, you're going to overwater it. But that you have to be careful with that too, because overwatering can kill a plant as quickly as underwatering. Okay, last thing, we talked about it being drought resistant. It can be in full sun to part shade. I'm putting it in part shade. It's zone six to nine. So for those of you in, colder climates, this particular azalea is probably not going to be for you unless you put it in a pot, right? Yes. And move it inside for the winter. Yes. And azaleas will go grow great in a pot. And depending on the size of it at full growth, this one is what? Three by three, this particular one? It says three by three. I've seen them six by four though. So mm -hmm. we'll just see what happens. Yeah. They're but not a fast particularly fast grower, are they? No. Okay. No, but you definitely want something bigger than the pot that it came in. So it has room to grow. Like a gallon or well, even more. I would make it even more. Yeah. Now give it room to grow. You can always plant um, some little annual at the base of it while it grows mm -hmm. to give you your color, your interest. But um, yeah, you need, you need a bigger pot. So and what you have, and I would say, I don't know, what's this, maybe this like 15 inches, maybe? Probably. I would say at least 15 inches in diameter or square. Either way. Yeah, yeah. And what's great about putting them in a pot is you can move it around and see where it gets the best sun. Fran is famous for putting something in a pot where she doesn't quite know where she wants to put it yet or wants to check out the sun situation. And then she just moves the pot around, it's awesome. And then might plant it. We are so internet savvy now. We can mm -hmm. go online and find out anything you want to know from a variety of sources. You want to go to Fast for the, for the Trees, yeah. where we got it first, and look what they have to say about it. But if it's not exactly everything you want to know, you can keep researching and you will find everything you want to know. So this is the azalea. We're going to move on to our next plant. Come on over. Now go make someone feel special today.